I follow, you know, I kind of look at people's uh, narratives or their their transmissions. Uh, I've noticed this year more than ever that even though people speak a different uh, language or have a different nomenclature, a lot of the intel is starting to really uh, converge. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I kind of use yours, I think, as a lot of people do, as a baseline. Mm -hmm. This last, I, I think, I'm not sure if you put them out once a week or once a month or just whenever you're guided to do so, but about a week ago, you put out a post and it was so spot on for me uh, in so many ways because it kind of married a lot of the, the different narratives. Mm -hmm. But there was one particular place that really spoke to me, and I'd like to start with that if it's okay with you. Uh, and it goes like this. These new light frequencies bring palpable, unknown sensations and an awareness of a unified realm shift as we approach a very active Stargate passage in June with multiple increases prior to the solstice uh, on June 21st. Uh, now, there's somewhere in here that you talk about how the illumination itself kind of suit here it is uh this is this is the part uh that that that's set up uh so many people okay part of the purpose of this new light is to dismantle our dense creations many are calling this trauma release this really spoke to me something to be aware of the release of trauma from the collective fields already occurred it isn't trauma it's the release of everything that was created as a reaction to trauma in the past Beliefs, coping mechanisms, narratives, past life stories, entanglements, context, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's another part in here where you talk about how the light itself, the illumination, essentially supersedes all worries, all strifes, all these kind of superficial things that have been um, kind of like uh, monopolizing us, you could call it distortion, distraction. And I found that really striking because I've been, like a lot of people, uh, without words. and it really spoke to me that, you know what, this isn't that complicated anymore. I don't have to dive into the shadows or my favorite quote for 2023, by, by the way, is attributed to you, which is you can either turn around and watch it burn <laughs> or walk through the new earth. And I thought, well, that's, that's it. That's it. Feed that light, keep on going, keep creating. And all that other stuff will kind of fall away with a lot less work. So I know that's kind of a huge intro and lead in, but if you could speak to the power of what we've generated as a collective and individually through our illumination and, and what effects and consequences, so to speak, it has on what life has been, and you know, to include worry, strife, and so on. Yeah. And just to uh, kind of get everyone on the same page or just, just kind of realize what has happened. So a little timeline, you know, 2012, the realities actually shifted. And everything that's been happening since then is revelation of what Gaia has actually created, her different tra trajectory. She has different realms for us to experience. She shared with me, we have seven, seven different realms, which is just like different frequencies of consciousness that you can experience right now. And then as a collective, we get to experience them together and, and kind of uh, migrate our, our realities and the harmonics to experience those as we go through our ascension process. So for a lot of people, experiencing uh, the death and dissolving of the old self in very profound ways, you know, this, this has already occurred. It's just now we get to experience it as a collective. And I find like the power of unity consciousness, when we talk about that fast light that acceleration, that photonic acceleration, where the light is faster than the speed of density. It's faster than your thoughts, which is why you can't kind of grasp thoughts sometimes. It feels blank sometimes, or like you just need to sit in stillness and allow your brain to get the upgrade so that you can interpret light and language and everything in a different way and you'll find it destroys your stories it destroys narratives it just destroys timelines that don't serve your divine self anymore so as this quickening continues to kind of stimulate all these different things it also reveals things that are happening in the collective and 
I, I feel it's important that people maintain a cosmic perspective and a divine neutrality through this so that you don't cling to the comfort of old stories, old narratives, or old interpretations, even of spirit or ascension or what's happening to you, and just kind of let go so that something new can get rewired uh, within your own system. So you can actually interpret these brilliant new realms that Gaia is unveiling and revealing to a lot of us. And my personal journey included quite an upgrade last year where suddenly I was reconnected with my I am presence. And that, even though I was able to touch it and experience it and communicate with it before, that's for for newbies, that's the first step out of source is your I am presence, right? The first step of separation. So all of your oversoul levels and everything are like unified with the I am presence. And even though it's been part of the mastery path to embrace and experience the I am presence, something new happened with the collective just last, uh, a year ago, March. And it happened during this massive geomagnetic storm. And just a hearts up, anytime the geostorms get above K6 and stay there for a while, you'll feel like the magnetic veils just collapse. And all of a sudden, there's opportunity there for us to regain parts of our consciousness and kind of reunite the fractals into a conscious state. And for me, that was so overwhelming because it came with, you know, I hold a lot of cosmic mother frequency and that just infinite compassion and grace and peace was very overwhelming. I felt it just wash away the illusion. So since that moment, since that passage, I have been consistently learning how to walk in these realms as a, as different consciousness. And even though I know that different consciousness, like we're all different beings since 2012, even though I know that occurred and you know, different veils get lifted as you go. It was profound. It was very profound. So now I'm consistently learning how to walk in these realms, experience many realms at, at once, and serve in a in a brand new way. Not just as a conduit of that energy, but also like the application of pure unity consciousness as one. So there's been a lot of refinement in the groups that I work with and the people that I work with and the way that I serve. Um, and that's just part of my personal journey that doesn't feel personal anymore. You know, a lot of changes, but it also gives this perspective, this clarity on, uh, on narratives and stories around trauma release. And this is definitely that, you know, a lot of information and conversation built around uh, what's happening because people associate it with things that have happened in the past or terminology that um, was used in the past. But from the from the cosmic perspective, from the I am, like where we're all connected, um, that level is providing, okay, take a look at it. It's not actually trauma release that happened a few years ago. And we all went through it and people were feeling it very strongly 2020 on right? Just huge releasing of trauma and you got to feel it. And, you know, the global pause supported that of all of us going, whoa, like I need to deal with myself and my family and my soul group and everything, right? Really gave us an opportunity to take a look at that. But what's happening now is the, the constructs. And again, it's just co-created realities, co-created belief systems around how you dealt with it, what you did with that information. You know, all those constructs need to fall so that we learn how to create in a new reality through crystalline intelligence, through Christed intelligence, unity, love light intelligence, that pure source spark that's within all of us. So mm -hmm. it's releasing all of the ways that we used to deal with trauma, like it's not the trauma itself. And a lot of people feeling that strongly too, as uh, soul groups and family monads, uh, that structure too dissipates. And it's not like 
disconnecting and rejecting that, but you can feel like the dissolvement of all of those entanglements and attachments and agreements just don't have any weight or pull or magnetic to them. They haven't in a while. So just on a collective personal level, there's a lot of uh, processing. Wow, I believed that story and I need to release it now uh, just completely. And the way that I construct stories around things that happen to me or happen to others needs to collapse or I won't be able to create in the new light. Mm. I won't be able to create from a pure source informed level instead of this weird trauma informed level mm. that we used to create with intensity because the density is technically gone and you'll feel it like the the body, the days, the time, everything feels less dense. And for some, when the the break the breaking apart of density, you know, sometimes the body, because the body for a lot of us was created in density, unless you're a crystal kid that came in in the last few years. Hmm. But uh, you know, the body can feel kind of heavy sometimes because the density feels even more weighty or the density of the outside world sometimes can feel like so heavy. And it's just because your consciousness is changing. It's becoming this more light-based, light-infused um, intelligence. Mm. So as we got, go through this refinement, it's wonderful to witness that. But also our focus needs to change into this unified way of creating the mm. ego transforms the mind transforms you know everything needs to consider the whole at all times and that's much easier when you're actually experiencing the reconnection with all that you are with source itself mm. easier to operate from that it gives you a different perspective it's uh it's very bizarre it feels familiar let yet unknown uh, I have to say, for my personal journey, it's it's been beautiful and bizarre. <laughs> I feel like these incredible <laughs> cosmic forces trying to merge right through your heart center and create something new because it's not a synthesis of what was. It's birthing of something brand new. So a lot of us working with light conception and the immaculate concept, like coming forth and actually birthing something brand new in these realms, it's uh, extraordinary. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, one of the things that I saw, in, and it must have been the write-up before, but it talked about, um, <clears throat> let's see, what was the word? You, uh, the, the re it, well, it wasn't the reaction thing, but it was about the, the illumination superseding all these different things. Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about doubts and you were talking about, you know, some human things, right? And nice. then you even said past lives. And then I believe I heard you the other day, or I certainly heard you now, where you also uh, talked about the dissipation of the monadic, I, I don't know if it's the monadic belief system and the soul tribe kind of connotation. Mm -hmm. Can you just uh, drill down a little bit for me on that? Because I want to understand that. My, yeah. as an example, because like my, my, up to this moment, <laughs> my uh, perception of monad and uh, more so monad uh, than soul tribe, because to me, soul tribe I can kind of see how that's easier to see or experience uh, at an earthly level. But the monadic part through dimensional experience, et cetera. I mean, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, even those things that, even the, the things that we know, even if they're beyond the physical, have to be broken down as well or have to be dissipated as well. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, the whole universe is getting an upgrade. So as these, like literally sound frequencies, harmonics start coming in. They're just shaking apart all the things that we created. And it's it's us, you know, it's not star family and the oversoul. It's it's all part it's of the so same thing. Right. And the the beautiful thing about like a presence activation or this new state is there's so many perfect moments where you kind of laugh at, um, at at what was created, not in a mocking way, but just in, you know, just 
complete freedom from everything that you created or you participated in or or even um, soul groups and family monads, like the entire illusion of density uh, just disappears right. often, right. right? You're just like, oh my gosh, just complete, all the entanglements and all the belief systems and everything just get completely washed away. And then of course, we're all moving forward well, then what's the new language? And they're like, hold on. And I'm sure a lot of people can feel this. Stop, right? right? Stillness before you go trying to push into a new creation or trying to figure it out with your old dense ways pause right? right there's got to be this moment where you feel the new thing coming into these realms that yes the more the more that we uh support that and surrender to that the easier it becomes but a lot of us are seeing the kind of snowball acceleration of all of these systems collapsing and you can focus on linear systems or dense systems or distorted systems, but it's actually the entire structure is crumbling, yeah. collapsing. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean, please, uh, folks, don't get attached to, oh, now I'm free from my family and I don't have to deal with them, or I'm free from all those old friends and I don't even want to deal with them. It's not like that. There is an inclusive, beautiful intimacy that comes with witnessing and feeling everything as unified, as source, as beautiful. I mean, I spend so much of my days just completely in love with everything. I'm surprised I can get anything accomplished at all. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> I just every, Everything is just so, be, you know, a breeze will come and I'm so in love or a bird will sing and I'm just so in love with that thing and then a person will present and I'm just so in love with them now everything you just start perceiving us as our star family and masters which is just other other aspects of self uh just perceiving everything from that they they see um source in everything they're not focused on trying to fix your darkness right they're right. just like, it doesn't even exist. That's right. just what you experienced in density. So as we come out of that, there's just a different perspective on a, and an honoring and a gratitude for all of our travels together, all the experiences here, and how we will all change. Because let's say the white sheep of the family decided to wake up and and transform the entire genetic code for the for the lineage or just amplify the light regardless of circumstance because you are not your circumstances right that that also is an illusion so all of those relationships get transformed and as we walk through that you know we become that star that little pinpoint of light that's then shining through all of those realms so that they can just get uh, they can experience the expansion and it's not personal. That's the thing. Like don't treat it as me and that person or that mother or that father or that cousin or that friend, you know, stop treating it. it stop creating separation, right? The, the more you can release yourself from outcomes or, or um, your need for others to do certain things or right. treat you a certain way, just it all dissolves, right? And even, I just want to mention, because this seems to be a little rampant in the collective right now, just feel into your heart and, and please try not to criticize the way that you used to be or your old belief systems um, by kind of projecting them on others who are at a different stage of their journey and believing certain things or doing certain things. There's no need just because you leveled up or have a different perspective to mock or make fun of people who are at a different level of consciousness or maybe still entangled in the old narratives. That's not the way to step out of this. 
right? We don't mm-hmm. make no master has ever mocked what other people believe in. They simply shine the light and share a different experience, right? So there's no need to um, kind of pull apart and mock and make fun of and criticize uh, as the as the realms as the old systems come apart. Mm. I feel that's important. And I feel it's also probably a good sign of how much light you're emanating and how to emanate this love and have love and compassion and grace, even for the folks who are still doing things that you happen to not believe in anymore or not experience anymore, right? There's a, a true refinement of our vibration happening right now. And I've always said, let us show the way, right? Let's demonstrate to humanity what's possible with ascension. And I feel because there is such a strong acceleration of this love light intelligence of this crystalline photonic light, and it's affecting everything, water, plasma, the plate systems, the crystalline grids, the stargates, the master crystals, like everything is getting amplified right now. And if you put put your focus on, because it's it's a person, it's just a a personal reaction for a lot of people to them shedding their old beliefs and narratives is be like, oh, I can't believe you still believe in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, honey, we see like you're dealing with your own stuff, but it's uh, if we can just like upshift and up level and continue to amplify the new consciousness and sharing, if we can at all encapsulate in words what's happening to us right now it's a very different state of consciousness and we've always described unity con- p- true pure unity consciousness is such a radically different state than we are accustomed to we're all going to go through these windows and gateways and passages where your higher levels are going to say shh yeah you need to spend as much time connecting with zero point stillness as possible right it's not like the past where you have to give up everything like many of us did right we've a lot of us did that in order to transmute that step for a lot of people but you are going to have to give up your addictions and your habits that don't support expansion I had a lot of like, people getting uh, 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 really nursing their own heart through st- keeping themselves alone or separated or only interacting on social media, getting even addicted to sh- social media as a support system. It's like you've got to you've got to get connected with Gaia and people who are experiencing uh, something new and learn how to co-create in that new light. I, th- I feel that's important this this year because next year is a completely different state of consciousness. So all of us that are kind of gobsmacked by the presence thing that happened last year and then this year again, wow, oh brother, I went through it in March. I didn't think I was coming back really? to service or my body or anything. Thank you. I'm I was <laughs> like- I was like, am I going to die? You know, it's just, uh, and it's, it's kind of, I don't know, we'll go off on a, a death tangent if, if we want, <laughs> but uh, it was like three weeks of, I don't even want to talk to anyone until I am completely capable of expressing myself in the new way. Yeah. And I just didn't touch the keyboard. Everything was on autopilot all through Equinox, just Ooh, and it was beautiful because I was snowed in in Mount Shasta for weeks. Like, couldn't even go outside. <laughs> I couldn't even right. go to see my friends. Just like right. really in it. But I really learned. Um, I'm very good at holding space. So that being present with with yourself and the cosmos and the universe and everything is uh, so needed. And then it started. Then the balance started happening. It capable of holding that new frequency and that new self as it starts to emerge and become a a thing that doesn't have identity. It's just source, just allowing that to uh, be in, you know, infuse what I produce 
with that frequency still learning yeah right but there oh. were definitely like full wipe like blankness like i wow just yeah like even even now i mean uh even now. but uh, but you said a couple of things i just want to restate them because these are my takeaways i love doing these the show because I, I feel like i'm in a session but uh and thank you for answering that thing about like a, you know the monad soul tribe the different uh threads that we have i understand it now because because this is part of the unexplainable that you just help explain, which is uh, you don't really understand it, uh, but but basically everything collapses to the present. That's what it it made me uh, be able to articulate for myself is mm -hmm. that even because I would have said past lives, uh, it's just like a trauma, it's an attachment, I'm past that, past that, past that. But when I get to the monads where you've had dimensional experience, et cetera, so really, it comes down uh, after hearing what you had to say, it, it, whether it's true or not, isn't even a question. It's not even it's not even in the in the equation because we're being forced here. This is how I feel to the, be present like you're talking about. You can't hide. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't uh, divorce yourself. I've uh, been spending the last uh, five months in Houston in my family's old stomping grounds, which is an uh, uh, the, the oldest suburb in Houston, right next to downtown. Oh. And it's been interesting because my daughters live here, my youngest, and uh, and I walk around, go to the coffee house, lots of young kids, lots, lots of uh, uh, kind of universal area. I mean, it's very eclectic, very progressive. So you meet all these different people. You could be sitting at a picnic bench at the coffee shop and there's an attorney and then there's a homeless person that plays music on the corner. And, and, I, and I found it fascinating because I would work, 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 then I would go meet my daughter, meet some people, and engaging these people, not from a mask that I had before, but actually allowing myself, which I found to be quieter, and just observe, and then engage, some of the things that I received from these people that were strangers to me were absolutely fascinating. Uh, you know, I was engaging their higher self, they were engaging mine, and yet, they're not in these light worker community circles or so to speak. It's quite fascinating. Uh, but it 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 helped me as an exercise. And I'm not an introvert, but I have been very introverted, especially since COVID hit. <laughs> you know, I've spent a lot of time alone, so I can relate to what you're saying. But it allowed me to understand that this part I will never have again. This is this is this is gold. If I don't get it here, I'm not going to get it anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. So I really appreciate you covering that. Uh, the other thing that you said, and I, and, I, and I think this would serve to, to speak just a little bit more on it, is what you said earlier about the way these things are coming in. And it's and it's like, and I know some people might struggle with this, but for me, I kept going, why, am, why go to the shadow again? Why go to the shadow again? It felt like to me that there was enough cleared that I could walk towards the new earth, that I could, you know, take that pause and try to create something in this trinity energy these things will fall away my vibration is too high and if i want to go back there and watch it burn i can watch it burn uh and and so if i equate that to the way these things are coming in which used to be once a week or once a month even a couple of years ago now it's like two or three a day especially when those k7s or whatever all that stuff is going on which has been amazing um it it feels like to me that it used to be they would come in and the wave would come in and 90% of the time we would be going, okay, what do I need to release? Okay, what is this? What is that? What is this? And then you would get that little 10% expansion activation, you know, where you come at them and go, oh, what was that? Mm -hmm. uh, and then a few days later, it comes into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, it feels like what you were describing about this whole bewilderment, like this, what? <laughs> where it yeah. comes in, you might get a little quick. 10% sting of a, of, of a, a feeling or an emotion or a memory, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. and then you're sitting there for the next 90% of the wave going, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. And that pause you talk about, uh, whether it be in the uh, transition of the, you know, or the transformation of the wave, or it be in trying to create in the new energy. I have spent the last 75 days since we launched this thing jumping off with both feet you know aware of the collective aware of the personal to my to my wholeness as much as i could be and not being able to take a step 
until something kind of unfolded. And it was, and it's been trying because part of me is going, we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do this. And something speaking to me, third energy, what my heart, whatever you want to call it, me is saying, no, it's not mm -hmm. right yet. It's not right. Yet. But yeah, but what about this bill? And what about that? No, no, right. doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You just, mm -hmm. and I just went through this from May 11th through yesterday. And I'm not quite got it all yet, but I know, I know I didn't take, you know, those, I didn't break that, that credo. I didn't, I, I, mm -hmm. I listened to it. I didn't want to, but I can see that it really, really works. And it really is an absolute, totally different place that none of the old mind constructs or um, rationale works at all. And it's wild and it's strange and it's exhilarating and it's a little frightening. <laughs> so I, I feel yes. like that, that, you know, these waves, you know, just to conclude it, um, we come out of it. And now our energy of thought, you could say in so many words, and I don't mean to throw shade on anyone or anything. It's just my own experience. It doesn't need to be wasted on all of that, all of that that we've worked our way through and just to get to the point, realize it wasn't even real, but to yeah. then allow our energy to kind of permeate and mix and, and with this collective universal energy, because really it speaks for itself. And the last thing I'll say is as the days go by, and I don't know what I'm going to do for a profession <laughs> because I have less and less and less to say because my my voice inside of me says, if you know it, you don't got to say it. Now, I have a different role than you and other people, but it's more of a, Not like really. when you talk, well, you're right, you're right. I, I, I will uh, digress on that. The uh, But what I was going to say is, it's what you were talking about earlier. It's the it's not so much the part of me that that should or shouldn't talk because I know it. It's the part of me that wanted to say something because I know something you don't. Like what you were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, the judgment, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, the comparison, the superiority, unconscious to us. Why compare? Why mock? Because even if it's a little degree, it's just it, energetically, it's just as big as anything. It's right? off, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel that. I know personally, um, and especially, you know, with the service thing, I am currently, you know, I moved the, the crystalline convergence is like my big event in Sedona. <laughs> and uh, that's what I, uh, I just I saw moved that. it from spring to uh, September equinox. Just ah. everything was like, don't touch spring, right? I was like, okay, so I had to move the whole thing. And uh, which, which is beautiful. Wow. Just opened up all kinds of space for this transformation that we're all going through right now. Cause if we had had it in the last couple of months, it, it would have been, uh, it would have been a different expression altogether. So there's a, a lot of recalibration and literally our hearts refracting light in a different way, which just blows my mind uh, completely that we're capable of doing this now, but with the, the service question, so many people are stimulated by the creativity coming in because it is, it's, we are being pushed into being true creator beings again. And we have to learn, not relearn, but learn like a brand new way of creating an unity consciousness with different frequencies and different light and a different planet that's becoming a star like it's a completely different system so these passages where we do get the message to be quiet or to stop creating in, in the old way stop creating with your your you know your voice and your thoughts and your expression and everything like stop like it's just like the hamster wheel you mm -hmm. know it's just like stop stop doing that right and for a lot of us when you get that message of hold on right just step back from that and feel the stillness feel the new true you trying to squeeze its way into uh these realms so it can change everything we want to honor that stillness and at the same moment in the same now we can feel like a new way of creating or new services or 
new creations that really want to be birthed. We're going to spend some time. John Burgos is my my co-creator. Uh, we're going to do a huge section on just creating new services as presence, as this new thing, and how that's not just how that's done, but how to actually feel where your new consciousness, this new light wants to go rather than the old self who's so um, comfortable or feel safe with creating things that truly everybody else is doing, right? There's, there's nothing really new in, in that, you know, we have our new expressions and, you know, you have your membership and you have your events and you have this and that and everything that structure too is going to have to change to accommodate unity consciousness. And we all feel it. And we felt this, oh my gosh, I had this conversation with sisters in 2011. I was like, well, everything's going to change and we can't just keep doing, you know, the same kind of events and everything. And here it is, you know, 10, 12 years later, the thing that has really um, been kind of walking me through this, not just presence level, but taking so many moments, hours throughout the day to just be with the stillness and stop trying to interpret the frequency in a linear way. Mm. So there's a lot of, shh, let it go, let it go, let it go. A true refinement of where I direct my energies, who I interact with, not from a hierarchy level, but just really feeling where the heart wants to direct this energy, how my consciousness itself wants to express, because again, it's not personal. It feels so unified that it's washing away Sandra Walter. A lot of times um, the experience of death on an etheric level and sometimes on a physical level where it feels like I'm just not going to exist, not going to project into these realms uh, as a body anymore, right? I can feel my body transforming. There's this kind of celestial light body mechanism that's coming online, completely directed by this new heart. I've had a change in the way my heart refracts light. So it it's not, which is completely uh, disconnected or detached from the way my heart used to interpret my own frequency. So it's much more unified. Spending time with that, of course, has become a priority. And even creating things like the convergence, which is a lot of linear tasks, you know, with event planning and such. Um, there are days where I was like going to dedicate, you know, quite a few hours to creating, well, let's say, graphics, <laughs> website or whatever. And it's just not now, not today. The energy mm -hmm. isn't there. And then all of a sudden a window opens up and it's there. So planning uh, goes out the window as far as um, linear tasks go. Making it okay to be that way now is lovely. And as someone who has learned how to trust the journey and surrender old ways of operating, you know, longer, no longer city gal, no longer mountain gal, no more, you know, all of those just disappear. So now being presence, and even though I'm in Sedona, you know, a, a linear place on the map and doing completing all the work this year with what Sedona was supposed to be upgraded to. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, whether I stay here or not, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. It just doesn't matter. You know, all the trajectories are ascension yeah. and what ascension can reveal to us. So the the death of the old self is is beautiful. It in the beginning, uh yeah, I've had many near-death experiences, so I'm not really attached to being in my body, um, which I feel makes it easier to 
experience this right now. I, and like one of the, this might be profound for some people to hear who are concerned about the dark, all right? Um, first of all, please face your fear of living as light without shadow. The perception of duality itself too has to be a balance of light and dark. That story itself is collapsing. Something new is coming in, you know, to live your life as as star, solar, cosmic, Christ consciousness is different. You know, there's just no focus on the shadow whatsoever. And you let go of all the stories of overriding and bypassing just such old terminology. Letting go of that too as the old self dissolves. But the very palpable experience of death of the old self perhaps that's kind of our strongest guidance right now help people through this they're going to start feeling it because so many of us got activated as a collective and even though you can call it the ascending hearts or the collective that got activated as presence last year it's it's a still a unified thing whether or not a, a body consciousness that still believes it's that's still entangled with its journey as a body on the planet uh, wakes up or not is is not our concern, right? And this might be profound for some people to hear as we go through death of all these things, but the dark or the dark forces um, have chosen uh, death, yeah, not yeah. death of everybody else, but death of the, themselves, right? And that perspective of Ooh, they actually have, they've accepted that they will be uh, destroyed. So now they have like a death wish and it's not a death wish for the whole planet. It's for themselves to be revealed and like end the madness, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That really touched my heart. I just got that um, over the weekend too. Wow. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Um a kind of let's go is a let, uh, releases a lot of folks in the collective who are so focused on destroying that. I'm like, they're actually destroying themselves. True. They have a death wish, you know, at, the, at this point. Um, they've accepted that. And those beings who um, have created those distortions and everything um, ha have come to, you know, it is a collective. So they've come to to their own acceptance of mm, what I thought I could create. Uh, it it doesn't have any energy. It doesn't have any gas anymore, yeah. right? Only the beings that uh, emphasize those stories, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. This agenda is that. That's the only energy they're running on right now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that resistance, that, yeah. I see that out there and it has changed from the last couple of years, you know, even yeah. last two, three, four years. Uh, it's not sticking. That, that's the thing. That's the one qualifying uh, uh, all on the same playing field. It, any energy, I guess you would say that's, that's got that um, polar, uh, the duality. It's not sticking at all. It's, it it's it, not for anybody. Uh, and you said something else earlier too, which um, I've been trying to encapsulate. Uh, now you mentioned March, and on March first, I woke up. It's not usually my thing, but I started seeing stargates, and I'd never seen that before. I'm like, yeah, there's stargates all over the earth, and that this started a whole thing. Mar <laughs> March, March, cosmic April, party, woo! Right, welcome and to my world. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, and then it was, uh, you you got to leave social media, and I'm like, uh, I, I I don't have a penny like you know what are you talking about and and boom you go and the and the craziest thing happened um so i think we announced it on the 10th and we went ahead and and did two weeks going out the door and then we started uh, doing on the 24th our shows on the new platform when i came for the first show i've done 4200 shows probably almost 6000 video videos over the time and i I was so nervous and not just the first show, but the second show, the third show, the fourth show, the fifth show. 
And I realized after about 10 shows that this wasn't going to go away. And mm -hmm. I realized that, that I was having a glimpse of, of a sacred space, sacred lifestyle. And it wasn't just me. It was actually started with people in the comments starting to help me understand it. They'd say, oh, the energy is different in here. And I hadn't even thought about it. And then mm -hmm. as the next show comes on with no solicitation, oh, the energy is different in here. you know. And, and I started to realize it's a small piece. So how do I navigate this? you know? And, uh, and I think the best example is after many, many initiations over the last few weeks, um, I, May 11th, I had one of those great days, <laughs> you know, where everything's just like you get shot out of the cannon and you're walking yeah. on water and, you know, and Jesus is right next to you and Kuan Yin and you're like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> and I came back to the house and I got a phone call and it was the deepest of the deep of the 3D, right? And, and I took the phone call and uh, this energy of, of pure human fright, fear, I don't even know how to describe it. We probably all had it at one time or another. And uh, and it came in and I said, okay, hung up the phone. I said, okay, uh, I'm going to sit with this. I'm going to feel this. Mm -hmm. And I did. And, and, you know, and I just, I was like, okay, okay, so what? <laughs> and, then, and then eventually pop, boom, it's gone. And I went through to the other side and I thought, how did I do that? You know, mm -hmm. uh, and it, and it was later revealed to me through self, you know, uh, it was transparency. So from that point, I had to really hustle and, and really, you know, stay on top of things to keep things stabilized, keep things going. And it all culminated uh, in a meeting yesterday afternoon with my co uh, collaborators. It's a beautiful couple. And I spent the night before very sensitive to the old loops playing in my head, loops of judgment, loops of this, loops of that. I'm thinking, oh, this is interesting. I'm not going there. And mm -hmm. so I just went into this transparent with self thing. And, and instead of creating any uh, imagination, running wild loops and all that, I just went to the source. And then the source became, you know, I am the source. And then it was these two beautiful people. And I, and I just, kind of held the space there was no words so then I get mm -hmm. to the meeting and I just heard you know just be transparent just be transparent just put everything on the table and I did and I know their hearts I had no expectation I had no thought about it but not only did they meet me there they expanded the space two people not one and it's not like they knew what I was going to say. They just, it, it was like, and I'm still not quite um, understanding it all. But in this moment, as I stand with you, I, uh, you know, just very recently, like you talked about what you picked up this weekend for me was, okay, stop trying to figure this out because you're not going to figure it out. Just go from space to space, from moment to moment, and consciously, to the best of your ability, be transparent, be wide open. You're not going to go wrong. And it's, mm -hmm. and again, it's wild and strange and frightening and vulnerable, but mm -hmm. it's quick to the other side, quick to uh, uh, what occurs as a consequence. And, and it's, and it's that beautiful, that, uh, that love for everything you see kind of energy, you know? And, um, and I got to tell you, I feel, I, I feel like I'm dying right now. <laughs> so as i, I as i bear my heart I feel like i'm but... dissolving all the time <laughs> yeah all the time and that the emanation i'll just speak to that transparency i have um this yeah i'm just calling it presence activation because that was just the the reconnection that occurred but to feel of uh, the, the kind of cosmic mother energy that uh truly is requesting me and probably a lot of us to hold a different frequency. And of course, when you emanate that, we have to realize that every other being on the planet is also getting the same energy. It's just the way they interpret it, right? But there's a quickening 
happening in everyone else. So when you bring that that frequency, that higher um, purity to uh, a conversation, a meeting, the grocery store, anything, you'll notice how it just starts to self-correct realities, right? Things just, and that's, even though in the past we called it miraculous, because it's miraculous healing, things just happen, right? Things just autocorrect when you hold that field. But I've found too, brother, with uh, my online events and everything else, a lot of clear direction to hold that field, hold that energy open. And as a gatekeeper to hold this thing open, you know, this crystalline stargate that is now emanating different light, it's uh, when I put my focus there, like everything just takes care of itself. And perhaps we are demonstrating uh, how to walk through the challenge of, I want to create something new, but I don't want to do anything. I'm experiencing dissolvement of the old self. So how do we even talk about what I have to offer? You know, all of those things that, that arise, uh, I feel all of us are teaching, showing the way of how to walk through that simply by being very transparent about the experience. And the death, which is a theme of, of like first theme that I had in December when they're talking about what's going to unfold this year, the very prominent theme was death. And it wasn't just physical death. It's this death of the old self, the old constructs, like there's, there's nothing to stand on. Right in as Gaia just eliminates, you know, those platforms for our existence. It's just the magnetics, everything is just completely changing the foundation that we stand on, and which is why you build everything on the heart, because that's your gateway to new realms, different expressions. We really have to trust it. I feel like the, the global pause gave us uh, an opportunity to calm down, experience that state as a, as a collective. But now as we move forward and we want to get out there, it can't hold the same intention, right? Even intentions to uh, do proper energy exchanges or create abundance because I want to build this new thing. Like that can't be the core intention right. any longer, right? It's got to be... Hmm, let me emanate uh, different frequencies, perhaps uh, teach exactly what I'm experiencing now or these next levels for me. It's next levels of ascension and realms and how water and crystal and everything like interact, which is fascinating to me, but it's it's different. It wants to be expressed in a different way. So I haven't created an online course. I've simply been doing like every other month, these presence events which are styled to feel like the convergence, which I thought that field was too strong to hold in like a webinar. And here we are doing it, yeah. you know, just like the co-creation field gets amplified, the experiences, it's it's beautiful, but it'll be interesting as we go into these, these different states of walking in this world that make us feel so um, detached from the old self, or like we're dissolving, just nothing feels real or um, kind of tangible right. anymore. Right. It's very, it's very different. Dissolving. Very different. Yeah, dissolving is a good word. Um, it's almost like what you're describing is, you know, we talked about embodiment for years and years and years, right? Uh, like the embodiment was the inhale. Mm. Let's get back in the body. Let's get back in the body. Let's get back in the body. And now we, <laughs> and so now we're detaching from, not just the body, but, you know, like you were talking about, even the journey and stuff. And it is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought this up because uh, I've been saying to myself for the last few weeks, uh, you know, we used to have 30, 30, maybe even 40 um, uh, shows scheduled in front of us. I haven't had more than 10 nice. at any time, uh, usually five. I think right now it's four. <laughs> and they're spread out it's like allowing for the pause allowing for the space it's like you can feel it 
like you're not allowed to do it or it, it opens up for you. But going back to what you were saying, um, each day I get up and I, and I basically say to myself, okay, what are we doing today? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. but I know it'll, it'll show itself. And it may be me being on my back all day. Uh, if that's what the, you know, the body calls for, but it has been a challenge. It has been a challenge uh, mm -hmm. to where does, where does the, yeah, yeah. Like where does the expansion go from here? Like with my work, what now? It can't be the same. Now, the shows have a different energy, and 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 that's there. Did I? You know, it, it's just all these different dynamics that are that are dissipating or dissolving too. <laughs> so it's like I don't have anything to base this on. Yeah, but there is a a different type of um, uh, awareness of what services and in my bones it feels uh and you spoke to it a minute ago like you really you can try uh to put something out there but if it's rooted in any way <clears throat> from lack or i need to get some money together or you might as well forget it <laughs> it's got watch to be it. and a warning for people watch uh, it right careful right. Careful, yeah. responsible creation is the thing. You got to qualify all the light and creations yeah. coming out of you, or the the boomerang is harsh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it even means, you know, like for me, because I tend, I tended to. I'm, I'm getting better to say we're going to go do this and we're going to go do that, and you know, high energy and creating energy balls and you know this is but something's happened you know yeah. you can call it maturity you can call it a, a wider state of consciousness for the individual for all of us or whatever that pause is becoming so important yeah you know uh, there's so many things i could have done say for instance uh, the, the two or three days before this meeting i spoke of yesterday so many things i could have put together and presented and and said that da, 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 but I, I i wasn't allowed to I, I, I wasn't allowed to, it took some conscious consciousness, but most of that consciousness was me laying down with my eyes closed, holding this space. Holding you could om yeah, you could almost call it like the unknown of the void. And the void, you know, for some people, oh, it's dark, it's, you don't know, but no, no, it's, 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 to me, it's the mother's womb. It's just. Mother, it's cosmic um, mother. Mm, like we're yeah. really getting to know her again not as a being as a conscious field right as an energy and cosmic mother has always been the gateway to ascension so as that comes through and gaia is emanating that frequency if you're getting the direction to just hold this like even back in march i was like i'm not doing anything <laughs> you know i did my presence event first week of first weekend of March. And then it was like, okay, now we need you to hold space. Right. And it's reading books, meditating, listening to music, no online, just big grid set up, snow, completely snowed in, just holding that field of love, like consciousness, just that total compassionate, open, peaceful. And I really feel this is teaching us too by so many of us, um, even if people are just feeling it as a physical thing, like, oh, I had to lay down like three times today or whatever. It's like, well, stop making it a problem, mm -hmm. right? Like we are, we, there's a request here to hold that field and allow that energy to permeate all of these realms so that Gaia can reveal for more of the collective uh, the realms that she's already created you know if you think of like seven different layers and we're experiencing three i got a big gold four a couple nights ago and i was experiencing dramatic vertigo and activations for my star family thank you but wow um but like a big gold four like all of a sudden the fourth realm is starting to come through which is like pure unity consciousness being able to create in the in the unified field um 
now available to us in a, a different way, a true Christed uh, beingness coming in to a lot of us. And it's always a domino effect. So I know if a few of us get activated, then it just trickles out, you know, it gets sent out into the field available to anyone. But I feel like the, perhaps the thing to remember for people who are feeling that, like, feel the frustration, have your weeping session or whatever, like, oh my gosh, not another day where I don't feel like doing anything or the energy isn't there. Oh my gosh, like, that's been like my life for the last few years. <laughs> just like, okay, we'll just, uh, you know, allow for the, is there a creation window today or not where you can kind of uh, do linear things? And then of course, bringing a lot more uh, joy and enthusiasm to sharing and creating new things. You know, you find your niche. It's all got to be creative though. Creativity mm -hmm. is definitely the key. You have to balance consistently with nature creativity and listen listen to gaia listen to the mother yes. right she has so much just remember she knows everything that you're going to do here just shush, 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 shush. so yeah. just feel the energy and stop trying to uh allow the mind to comprehend what's actually happening right now because yeah. it can't be you no. know that last post it's faster than the speed of our thoughts it's faster than the speed of our doubts it's faster than the speed of anything that we created in the illusion of density let it go and that's the part that's the part i was trying to find <laughs> oh that's faster speed. than yeah because you 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 Late made that speed. look yeah yeah that that uh that that was the part that was the part that I went, I, I knew I was right. And I don't mean right as in, I wasn't trusting myself because I, why am, why even go there? Like why it's just showing itself and, and, and I can sit with it and it's gone or, or whatever. It, it's not yeah. sticking. So what does that mean? That means that I can just keep shining. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> show up be go, transparent. Stop trying. Yeah. Yeah. be I transparent uh, it's funny because uh, on monday nights i make uh, music with my brother uh, ty and um uh and you know we've been doing it for uh, i don't know about a year and uh, uh last night he came in he'd been in mexico last week so we missed a week and i forgot to put the post up <laughs> and we got into the studio he goes uh you know did you put a post up i said no he said, well, you want to go like go on the old platforms, you know, so we get some people in the house. And I said, no, I just, why don't we just do this together? Yeah. You know, and the reason I mentioned that is because uh, another, another way for me to figure out how to implement this new code, as I see it, like, like it's not been done, at least in my, in my, you know, field as a, you know, human incarnated, what's the next state, uh, step that I take? And mm -hmm. what do you want to do, Todd? What feels good to you? Whether whether nobody sees you or a thousand people show up, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. And honestly, it doesn't matter because I realize now that it, my projection or my illumination is, is, is not dictated by anything or anyone watching me because the whole, the, the mother's watching me, right? Thank uh, you. <laughs> Last year, last year, I went to Sedona. I got called to Sedona in July. And it's so funny how this year, the rhythms are the same, you know, at least energetically. I'm not saying geographically or anything like that. Mm. And for the first time in a really long time, the mother came in. Like Mother Sedona, Mother Earth, Mother Goddess, all of the above and all in between. And I had the most extraordinary um it was a July, August, September, um, or thereabouts, especially July and August. I mean, she, I mean, it was just, it was the most uh, transformational time in my life to the mm -hmm. point of even at one point I, I, I was, I went out, I was at the studio on 89A and I went out to my car and I was sitting there, I think I was on the phone. I got off the phone <clears throat> and it was about five o'clock, 5.30. And you know how this goes, and maybe not for you so much, but I think so for all of us to some degree, like, what am I doing here? You know, I mean, am I crazy? And, and so here I am sleeping on the floor of 
the studio at her direction for six straight nights on this natural rock that's beneath the ground in this hundred year old building, right? Yeah. That was the level of it. So I'm outside and she says, I want you to get in the car and drive out of town, drive out to, to the West, like you're going to Cottonwood. Mm. All right. So I start driving, sun starts going down, uh, turn here. I turn here. There's this little cut off, this little dirt uh, turnaround pull out there I looked over here to the where the sun was going down and there was a monsoon in the middle of the sunset and this for and I filmed it pull out the phone just film it hey mother told me to pull over this most incredible light show this, it, that, that communicated with me to the to the nth degree it was all the mother and it was fascinating and all these people pulled up next to me and and uh, we watched it and then it went on and on I won't get into it but but the, 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 the reason, part of the reason I bring that up is because she stepped back in a few weeks ago. And last year, the message was, we're going to burn it out. Get out there. Go make it happen. Fire, fire, fire. Let's, let's, get, let's rip the Band-Aids off. Let's go make something happen. Let's develop some energy. And then this time, she came in, and she was like, that which you spoke of, that space in between like that nurturing that 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 which i know that which i come from right and and the the through all the fluctuations of the human um and the multidimensionality coming in and the reassessments and all uh, she just says uh, there's nothing to worry about just be you you are it you are all of it and so like even talking to you today about the monads that's another thread i can cut so to speak there is nothing left. It's all here. And, you know, I truly am spirit flesh. And then the reflections that you have on death. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm not going to phys physically ascend in the body? Well, what does it matter? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everything outside of me, essentially, and this may not go over uh, right if I don't say it right, but it's, it's a program. It's, it's, it's a coding or whatever part of my journey has brought me information and, and a wider uh, palette to paint from, so to speak. But I feel like I'm at a point now where I don't mean to take it or leave it, mm. but it's all the same thing. It uh, is. Right? Yeah. Unified. Yeah. Finally. Feeling unified. Yes and no. You know, all of that. It's just mm. uh, all of a sudden there's a, um, I have to, I have to share like the, perspective on everything is so radically different. Um, and as somebody who's had some, some good divine neutrality for the last 10 years, probably since my Shasta time, just really learning that deeply. But the way that we view uh, realities, outcomes, trajectories, our own journey, I have to say there's not a lot of there's not a lot of reflection on my own journey anymore. There are things that it, it, it kind of fizzles when I have like maybe um, impulse or, or a feeling like, oh, but wouldn't Sandra like to create this? That'd be really helpful because everything's been about service for forever, right? So now I'm like, well, what if I put out this and put out that and everything? But it, it, the energy, like if it has any kind of personal thing, it just, you know, it's like cosmic mother just brings you right back into mm. this like beautiful, neutral, peaceful place. And I have to say, like, as you know, here in Sedona, it's wow, it's going to be four years this this year of uh, the you know the instruction is to have it activate all this Sedona crystal and Christed energy so that she operated like Shasta. And, mm. and return the water to the canyon land. So all of our, oh, the monsoons have been like so, so infused with that um, beautiful new consciousness. Just I, to experience like the return of the monsoons and like a real monsoon season and feel like the cleansing and the flushing and the purification. And it's like raining cosmic mother, um, during those storms, like the entire energy changes, the land responds to that, um, to that new 
water that we're all playing with. Hmm. It just, uh, it really complements the process right now. Hmm. We're trying to, you know, take it to other locations too and kind of like feed it through the different stargates. But we have, you know, a lot of sisters moved here a few years ago for this particular part of the mission and we're almost complete just another year to go but really you can feel it yeah you can feel it a lot of how really many years how many years was that uh we came here in 2019 middle of 2019 um a lot of us you know instructed to step away from california that because weird things were going to happen <laughs> and then 2020 and you saw what happened with california goodness but uh yeah just building that, you know, and I know with uh, even like the last convergence, we got into such a state of zero point, the entire event ended in silence and no one wanted to leave that state. And then we, we go to Cathedral Rock and we watch the eclipse, like the moon comes up and then we like literally could watch the eclipse and everyone was silent, just like the ability to hold that field together and not feel the need to um, chit chat, explain, communicate in a verbal way. Like everyone was so heart connected and feeling and touching and 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 touching the ground and opening their hearts and tones once in a while. But to to feel that, you know, just as a way shower, to feel like, oh, we got there. Mm. Right? We got to that point where it goes nonverbal. It's pure energy. It's pure hearts. It's it. You know, we have granted we hold like a silent temple space with just toning and invocations, but that unique energy, um, which was then you know planted and and uh, anchored up on cathedral, could just really feel it. And now we know why. You know, every time you plant stuff in a stargate, it just disseminates out through the grids and then you know all of us tap into it it doesn't matter where you are on the planet yeah tap into it but there is there's something to be said for um trust and faith right now yeah right because it is so it's again unknown yet familiar it feels more like more God than you've ever felt before, yes. right? more divine presence than you've ever felt in the physical for eons. Yeah. It's just, oh, all of a sudden it's there and it continues to want more space, want more of itself to be present, right? So you've just become a conduit of that energy. And for people who are kind of pacing the floor, trying to figure out what to do, um, for a lot of people, that is our task. Just enjoy the experience. Mm -hmm. Enjoy how different it feels. Yeah. Right? Because it's not spacey, it's spaciousness. You know, it's different. Whoa, expansion. Right? Yeah. Get to know your true self. Mm. Yeah, that's presence. Yeah. Uh, so, when is your convergence going to be? September? Uh, September equinox, 23rd, 24th. 23rd 24th Equinox, september Equinox, sedona yeah sedona <laughs> uh, you're ready for it i know it's gonna be oh uh, that's it and that's a good month nine completion going into the to the last quarter that's gonna be that's yeah gonna be amazing. I'm, I'm glad that it got shifted i'm like oh that's where it lands that's gonna be powerful so well i just want to thank you again uh you know for being a guidepost for so many of us um and I know it must be exciting uh, for you and those like you after all these years, <laughs> all this stuff coming to fruition, but it's mind blowing because it is a great unknown, but it's beautiful. And, uh, and you are too. And uh, just want to say again, thank you very much, Sandra. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank uh, you, brother. You thank take you, brother. care and best you, of uh, uh, to everything that you're doing. All blessings.